Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here. I hope this will be another fun and relaxing watercolor activity. Let's start by talking about materials. So for paper, I like to use a 7 by 10 inch watercolor block from Windsor & Newton. These are easy to transport and the paper has a smooth surface. The link is shared below. Any watercolors will work, but Derwent Inktense Paint Pan Travel Sets are fantastic for travel and outdoor nature journaling. They come in these fancy little kits. They're easy to pack up, super clean. And then I always have a pencil with an eraser as well as a micron pen so that I, so that I can take notes. The other cool thing about the Derwent Travel Sets is that they come with a water brush. So this is perfect for painting outside because you don't have to ever bring a water cup with you. So they just screw off and they screw right back on. Um, there's your water, super simple. I will be using this image for my honeysuckle identification sketch. You can either take a screenshot of this and paint along with me or use any photo that you've taken from any of your hikes. I'm going to begin sketching using my pencil and this specific species of honeysuckle has elliptical leaves and they present opposite of each other on the stem. They have very prominent points so I'm going to make sure to call that out on each of my leaves. begin adding color, I encourage you to wet your paper first and then once we add the pigment we'll allow it to bleed out organically. That's one of the beautiful things about using watercolor. I prefer to start with the stem and then I'll finish with the leaves. And the specific image that I'm using does not have any bloomed flowers, but honeysuckle will bloom with white flowers later in the spring. Once your stem is dry, you can begin painting the leaves. I like to focus on one leaf at a time and lay a light wash base layer of yellow green. I will then add darker greens to add details, but you should really experiment with the colors that you have and see how that changes the color of the leaves as you build more layers of pigment. So try to start adding this base layer and remember to keep the white parts of your composition completely dry so that none of the pigment runs into those areas. Make sure to keep this activity fun and relaxing. Don't get too worried about the details. This exercise is about identifying the plant rather than making a perfect painting. So once that base layer is down, allow your leaves to dry and then we will add the details. Now my painting is dry and I'm going to start with this leaf, so I'm going to focus on adding the details to this one first. I'm going to start adding details by using my really dark green hues. I always like to play around with some navies and some blues as well because that can enhance the, the colors of your leaves.
so to finish up this journal entry, you obviously want to jot down some information about what plant you painted and where you took the image. So for this one, I'm going to write down the location, the date, and then a few of the facts that we learned throughout the video. And then I always like to write down what colors I used in my leaves so that I can refer to them in the future. Thank you.